Hey guys, um, I just wanted to give a, another update on my uh, procedural audio generator uh, for Unity. Um, the project's moving along, but uh, the scope has grown uh, quite a bit, so I've kind of had to uh, take time and focus more on specific areas. Uh, so I've been focusing a lot on the effects side of things for the time being, um, and I'm hoping to release an effects pack to the Unity Asset Store in the next week or so. Uh, so I wanted to give a video demo of kind of where the effects are and kind of what's possible with them. Uh, and I'd love to hear uh, from you uh, if you have any uh, suggestions or ideas or if you hate it and want to give me death threats, I'm up for anything. Um, so uh, to kind of show off uh, what the effects are capable of, I uh, created a simple loop in uh, Reason, uh, just four different instruments. Uh, I just picked some presets. Uh, threw some notes together and uh, didn't do any mixing within reason, uh, just bounced the loops out, uh, normalized them, and then stuck them into their uh, own individual game objects within Unity. So all of the mixing uh, for uh, th this loop is going to happen within the Unity interface uh, using uh, the effects that I've been building. Uh, so let's start off with the uh, drums. Uh, well, let me show you the entire loop first with all the instruments together, uh, just the dry version of everything. So it's uh, nothing spectacular, um, but it uh, sounds kind of video gamey to me at least. Um, so we'll just start off with that and uh, see what other uh, sounds come out of this as we go through the process. Uh, so let's start off with the drums. Uh, let me go ahead and mute these other tracks. Um, the drums uh, are pretty straightforward on their own. Um, but I've added a few devices that I think help out a bit. Um, uh, first of all, adding a bit crusher goes an incredibly long way to making things sound like uh, they belong in a video game. Um, all of this is uh, independent, independent control for uh, uh, bit, uh, bit rate and sample rate. Um, all of it is um, completely customizable by code as well, uh, so you can um, control it uh, as the game is progressing. Uh, you can do uh, whatever you want with the audio controls. And that'll go with any of the sliders on here with a few caveats. Um, next in the chain I added a delay. Uh, just to give the drums a bit of life and uh, give some backbeat to what's going on. Um, the delay is uh, locked to the uh, to the beats per minute. Uh, the track is 97 BPM, so I can set that uh, here in the delay, um, and then base all the delay counts and delay units off of that uh, value. And so it allows for pretty quick and easy um, manipulation of audio uh, that matches the original source. Um, on top of that, I've added a delay. It gets kind of masked when uh, the bit crusher and delay are going on. Uh, so let me just show that on its own. Um, it's not the best delay of all time, but it really uh, helps to broaden out the sound. Um, and then with all those together, uh, the drums uh, become a lot more uh, unique than just the original patch from Unity. Um, I'm going to leave the compressor for now. Um, that is isn't incredibly noticeable on its own, uh, but when all the rest of the track is going on, it definitely um, stands out uh, with the compressor. So I'll show you at that point. Uh, next, let's look at the bass um, on its own. Here's uh, what that sounds like. Um, so it's nice, percussive, uh, it's got an interesting tone to it, but I wanted to kind of uh, give it a different edge. Um, so I added in the uh, state variable filter. Um, this allows you to filter audio in a, uh, several different ways. Um, 
Uh, right now I have it on the low pass setting, um, which uh, makes the sound uh, only let the low frequencies through. And that's an incredible, uh, incredibly useful tool for a lot of different circumstances. Um, so um, this will probably be one of the most uh, widely used um, components in this uh, in this script uh, set. Uh, so with having just the uh, state variable filter on it, it sounds fairly different. So that's with it off. Here's with it on. Uh, but I didn't want to lose all of the brightness of the original sound, uh, so I wanted to add some distortion to it. Um, there's three different distortion components that I've had, uh, that I've made for this, and uh, all of them have their strengths and weaknesses, uh, so it kind of comes down to experimenting. Uh, there's the basic uh, common distortion. Um, And on its own, it doesn't sound incredible, uh, but it helps. I think it helps everything stand out independently in the mix, or if things are a bit crowded, uh, it can go a long way. It also sounds really good on uh, percussive elements, um, and it uh, it's uh, worth testing out uh, at different points in time. Uh, there's also a saturator, uh, and this will allow you to brighten up the sound without being quite so destructive to the tone of it. Um, uh, the saturator, as I've, uh, as I've put it together here, it's fairly bright. Um, I'm, I'll be working on uh, modifying that as time goes on, um, but it uh, still does a pretty good job of uh, what it's supposed to do. Um, but the distortion component that really uh, does a good job uh, in the most situations is this foldback distortion. Uh, it's got two different types of distortion included with it. Uh, there's the uh, soft distortion amount, which distorts the whole signal. Um, and it makes things, you know, it smoothly distorts uh, how uh, the sound is going. Uh, but then there's a second uh, harder distortion amount that's controlled by this threshold uh, variable. Um, and it gives a range of sound and a range of grittiness, and so you can really come up with some cool sounds by experimenting with uh, the input gain versus the threshold versus uh, soft distortion and hard distortion. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, so it's uh, definitely the component that I'm most excited about with um, this project. I, I think it'll um, come into uh, uh, handy in a lot of different circumstances. Uh, so the bass on its own uh, sounds a bit like this, um, and it's not incredibly thick, uh, but then I've added a sub-bass element uh, that works uh, in conjunction with it pretty well. Um, with this one, I've added a low shelf uh, to the to the bass to really uh, give it the um, uh, uh, much richer sound. So let me turn that on. Uh, it already sounds a lot fuller, um, and then adding a compressor onto it uh, really goes a long way. Um, actually, I might want to even turn that down a bit. So already all of these elements are uh, feeling uh, more uh, unique and independently recognizable than they uh, were before. Um, but um, the thing with mixing is that uh, it's how all the elements work together uh, that matters. It's not how they work on their own. Um, so I'm going to uh, take a look at the piano uh, real quick and uh, show a bit of what's going on there. Uh, the piano is kind of the melodic thing, so it takes more of the focus. Um, and on its own, it's not incredibly powerful. Um, it's... Uh, just the uh, original uh, NNXT default sample that shows up when you first load an instrument into Unity. Um, so it's really not significant on its own. Um, but I added in a, again, a state variable filter uh, with a high pass on it. Um, high pass um, 
takes out the low frequencies in favor of the higher ones. Um, which on its own, you won't hear significant difference, but with all the lower frequencies going on, throwing a high pass onto an element really goes a long way. I've also added in a delay uh, that, um, again, it um, can be uh, locked to the tempo. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's 97. Um, so when I turn that on, um, I instantly have uh, the broader piano sound. I added in the ping pong element to it. I have the decay time fairly uh, long uh, for this, and um, it's a fairly wet signal. I might actually dry it up a bit. Um, but it gives a sense of space to the melody without interfering with the central uh, piano coming through the center of the speakers, but the delays really broaden out the sound. Um, in addition, I have two different reverbs stacked on top of it, um, really giving it a lot of uh, space and making it stand out even more. Uh, but the part of this that I think uh, really makes the piano click is adding in the stereo widener. Uh, this can take your sound uh, all the way to mono um, just by summing it together or can go incredibly broad um, and make the sound uh, feel like it's coming out from beyond your speakers. Uh, so the stereo widener is going to be a really useful uh, tool in a lot of different circumstances. Um, so now that we've gone through all of the individual elements, um, let's uh, have them all play at once, and then I'll go back to the drums and uh, show just how effective that compressor is. So here's the drums without the compressor. Um, they're definitely present, they're definitely noticeable, uh, but here's what happens when I turn the compressor on. The snare tends to cut through a bit more, uh, the kick seems to sit better in the mix. Uh, it, it's a small thing, but uh, it, it really goes a long way. Um, and you don't want to go overboard with it, but um, it's definitely something to keep in mind uh, for mixing things together. Uh, so far, all of the elements that uh, I've been showing have been um, scripts that I've just dropped onto um, the audio source. All of these effects will work with whatever uh, audio you're currently using. Uh, they're just a, another component in the chain that reads through the audio buffer. Uh, so all of these uh, work uh, directly with the audio sources, however you place it, but it, they'll also impact the audio listener if you want to inf uh, impact the audio across all of your different sources. Uh, and that comes in, in handy uh, when you're trying to mix music from different sources. Um, so let me go through uh, some of what's going on on this master channel that I've uh, uh, put on the main camera object. I use the compressor some to even out the sound, but also drop the gain a bit uh, so the saturator isn't going uh, overboard with its processing. Um, I also added a bit more uh, width to the stereo field. Uh, but this doesn't just impact the piano, and impacts all the instruments, um, and particularly the drums get a bit more spread out because of this. Um, then at the end I added a, a second compressor to um, really uh, glue all of the rest of these pieces together. Um, again, uh, all of these are uh, simply um, mono behavior components that you can drag and drop onto any of these things. Uh, but any of the um, variables you see exposed in the inspector, uh, you can control uh, completely by code uh, in whatever ways you're wanting. Um, and that uh, really opens up a lot of possibilities for automation and uh, interactivity with the audio. Um, it also um, uh, allows for uh, you to um, have separate uh, instances of audio uh, working and you can you know, toggle mute on and off. Uh, without losing um, the uh, the place in the audio loop, um, Unity's precision with uh, audio looping audio looping isn't incredibly accurate, 
Uh, so it's better to mute audio than to uh, disable the component because uh, you can't resynchronize very easily. Um, but last but not least, um, I also threw in a uh, Bitcrusher component on the uh, uh, master fader here um, just to um, you know, take the video gamey feel of this um, the rest of the way um, and uh, give a feel for um, how much that can uh, impact your audio. Um, and um, well, let's take a look at that. So that instantly takes it from being semi-realistic in whatever capacity to full-blown, uh, we're walking around a video game world. Um, there's a lot of different possibilities that these effects have. Uh, I've been experimenting around with them as much as I can, but I'm sure that um, you guys will be able to come up with a lot more um, ideas than what I've come up with. Um, so feel free to let me know what your thoughts are. I look forward to uh, hearing uh, what ideas or suggestions or criticisms you guys might have. Uh, so feel free to uh, leave a comment on the video or uh, find me on Twitter or um, get, a, get in touch with me in whatever way you want. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys think. Thanks.